Now, one of the great mysteries of the Labour election manifesto was quite how far they wanted to go, and presumably want to go, in reversing Tory cuts to welfare. Debbie Abrahams is the Shadow Work, Work and Pension Secretary, and she's here with me now. Now, we know what your position is overall, because you have retweeted hashtag end austerity now. Uh, but I'd like to kind of examine a little bit about what that means. This week, we had a High Court ruling mm. that it was unlawful and discriminatory to have a welfare cap on single parents, mm -hmm. single families with children under the age of two. Mm -hmm. The Conservatives are going to appeal against that ruling. Mm. Labour's position presumably is you just get rid of that cap. Absolutely. Well, well we would get rid of the, um, we will make sure that we're holding the ruling from the uh, court decision on Thursday. We know that, can I just mention, I mean, that, that for people who don't know, um, was a judgment that said that it was completely discriminatory. It was having a detrimental effect on the well-being of children. We already know we have four million children living in poverty. This is just adding to it. Our position is um, that, that it needs to, to change. Can I ask you about the overall household cap? At the moment, there is an absolute limit to the amount of money you can get from welfare per household of £20,000 outside London, £23,000 inside London. Would you remove that cap? We recognise that for some people uh, listening to this, that might seem an awful lot of, of money. But the reality is what I've just said, the implications for people in the poorest uh, circumstances, the implications around child poverty, which affects children not just while they're young, but for the rest of their lives. It affects how their mm. brains develop and, and, and everything. Uh, and, and so we, the answer is yes, that, that cap would go. We would, we would be looking to see how we do that. Right, because how much would that cost to remove that cap, do you know? Uh, we haven't costed it uh, yet, but we know that, for example, the, uh, the court ruling is about 50 million. So it's not an astrical, astronomical figure. And we need to make sure, when we're talking about ending austerity, Andrew, this is about making it fair. It's not right that 4 million children, three quarters of whom are living in working families, sure, but a lot are of, subject to poverty. A lot of people watching are expecting you to want to end it now, I mean, as soon as possible, not at some point in the future. And we're looking at the range of measures that we have, so for example, in in terms of what we said about raising the national living wage, very, very important component about making sure that we have a uh, regulated uh, private sector rent system, making sure that uh, sure. housing is affordable. That all now, now those, those things were in the manifesto. The two things that we've talked about today mm -hmm. weren't in the manif manifesto. Mm -hmm. Can I ask about something else that wasn't in the manifesto and there's some confusion about, which is your attitude to freezing benefits overall. At the moment, mm -hmm. there is meant to be a freeze on benefits until 2020. Mm -hmm. Would Labour end that freeze? What we have said is that we would uh, reverse a number of measures. So, for example, the cut around uh, ESA, uh, work-related activity for disabled people, around personal independence pay uh, payments that the government, very wrongly in my view, introduced new regulations, if, if I may yeah. just finish this point, introduced re new regulations that were going to actually penalise people with chronic mental health conditions. And we thought that this was absolutely wrong. The, but the, the overall freeze you won't end. The overall freeze, the, the, no, we, we, didn't, we didn't cost that in the manifesto. What and you we don't did intend see, to end it? What we did say, uh, because there are a whole range of measures and, and the freeze is one aspect of the 2016 Welfare Reform uh, and Work Act. So, for example, around the cuts to work allowances, which makes mm. the, the universal credit programme absolutely not fit for purpose. It's not going to make work pay. It isn't making work pay. We have a situation where people are, are not receiving any money for six weeks, possibly sure. longer. So it's not really end austerity now, is it? It's end austerity in due course when we can no, afford look, it. Look at the, Slightly look at longer the, hashtag. Look at, the, look at the whole range of things that we, we've said that we're going to do. And it is costed in the plan. There's about £2 billion that we have uh, set by um, for transforming universal credit. Right. I mentioned uh, just one thing around the long hello the 62 okay. days before people actually get a payment there are also issues around the getting two payments in one month but not in another they have to reapply for for for, for UC. it goes on and on so it uh, you know there are a whole range of ways plus what I mentioned about the living wages as well Jeremy Corbyn has said that after the election result you have a mandate to end austerity um, and he's also said that you want to get rid of this conservative government as soon as possible I'm just wondering how you propose to do that um, are you going to be putting down motions in the House of Commons attacking Conservative austerity plans and trying to get the House of Commons to vote them down? As we have done um, on, a, on a number of measures over the last... Uh, yeah, well, the numbers, last are, numbers are very different now. Absolutely, absolutely true. So the, the, the court ruling uh, on Thursday, we in committee put mm. amendments to actually change it. The government ignored that. So th this is the third ruling 
that they are, uh, are seeking to overturn, where they have been, where court judgments have said, this is not right. This is having a detrimental okay. effect on. And it's about choices, Andrew. It's about sure. is it right that seven and a half million working people are living in poverty, four million children, disabled people, pensioners, and well, you, at the same time you, you we have the excesses that you, we see. In you moderns. mentioned poverty. Jeremy Corbyn has just said that he wants to see sixteen and seventeen year olds being paid the full. Uh, Labour proposed living wage, that's mm -hmm. £10 an hour. Do you mm -hmm. agree with that? Yes, I do. If you're doing do you not a think job, it would cause job losses? If you're doing a job, whether you're 16 or whether you're 30 or older, if you're doing the same job, why should you not be paid the same, uh, same rate? It's it, discriminatory. Okay. But if you're a small business, that's a very big new cost because they're paying £4.05 an hour now to such people and they'd be asked to pay £10 an hour. And the Federation of Small Businesses says that would instantly mean people were going bankrupt, it would mean job losses and it would be bad for the economy. And what we are looking to do is with the other measures, for example, in our, in our small business manifesto was making sure that that is compensated. We recognise that small businesses are the bedrock of the economy, mm. that we grow as a result of, of, of their efforts. So for example, around my campaign that I've had for, okay. for five years around late payments, £26 billion pounds still owed to small businesses, um, not being paid on time, which is more of an impact, is going to have more of an impact on them, uh, and we would outlaw this. All right, one last issue, if, you, if, uh, if I may. There's been a big row this week about the position of European citizens living inside the UK. A lot of the EU government said they don't like Theresa May's bold and generous offer that they can stay. Can you explain to us what is the difference between what Labour is offering these people and what the Conservatives have offered them? Well, of course, we haven't seen the detail. It is a, a little bit, uh, well, frustrating, should I say, that uh, we've, we've heard little bits that have been uh, leaked or through the, uh, through the announcement, through the dinner, and yet we haven't had the detail. That will be uh, tomorrow. What we're concerned about is it's watering down of existing rights for EU citizens, and that is, it, we do not support that. And why has that taken more than a year? This should have happened straight away, um, over, over a year ago now. We, we need to make sure um, that EU uh, citizens that have been resident right. here for five years have the same rights that they do now. David Abrams, thank you very thank much you very indeed much. for talking to us.